Hello everyone, and welcome to the first episode of this new series, How Bad Are They? A series where we look at those servants that everyone loves to hate so much and try to give them a fair, fresh new shake. I'm your host, producer, editor, all-around showrunner, Otto. I was going to make this pilot episode about the supposed worst four-star in the game, Steno, but with an Abby banner on hand, it seemed like a perfect opportunity to cash in on her relevance. So, without further ado, let me explain why Summer Abigail is not C-tier. All that and more to Today on How Bad Are They? Starting right off, she has a Buster Quick deck. Basically the best deck if you're a crit servant, although that isn't quite her focus. She is a foreigner though, so if you invest in her a lot, you can take advantage of that Archer Star Weight. It also helps her synergize with Van Gogh as she grabs an extra 100% crit per NP with her existence outside the domain passive. Once again, not her main focus, but it's a thing she can do. As with most Buster Quick decks, she has some pretty good gains. I've never had issues building NP charge with her. Her quick cards are okay, but her arts card is quite Quite solid. Her passive sergeant and weight definitely helps her game. Mighty Chains also helped her out a lot. On to the skills. Her first skill only affects one target. It inflicts a sleep debuff for two turns, removes all buffs, and 50% defense debuff with the same duration. Her status as an AoE servant might have seen more benefit in this skill affecting all enemies, but still, buff removal is a really nice niche to have. Even though there are a lot of annoying buffs that are unremovable, basically any challenge quest with servants has them use their skills. This means that they can stack disruptive buffs like evasion, target focus, crit rate boosts, etc. The defense debuff only works once, and she might not get much out of it because her DPSing is meh, but this can easily be taken advantage of by using a different damage dealer. 50% is a huge boost, even if it's only one attack. The sleep is something that confuses me. It's not the debuff that befuddles me, it's a stun that wears off when attacked. What befuddles me is why people think that it just doesn't gel with her at all. It isn't hard to not remove the sleep as an AoE servant. You can just not attack the enemy that's sleeping. Why do people act like she'll be using her NP every turn? She's a buster servant, not an art servant. You use the skill ahead of time and you get a free stun. In practice, what I have found myself doing a lot is just using it as a two-turn stun. It's a nice little timeout button. If one of the enemies has their NP and you just can't deal with it on that turn, you can just put them in a corner for a few turns. Her second skill is pulled straight from her winter version. AoE 20% defense debuff and 3 turns of terror. Unfortunately, while the proc chance saw a slight improvement, the cooldown did not. 7 turns is rough. It's still a pretty good skill. The odds of not getting a stun on any of those 3 turns is 9%, so you basically have a 91% chance to stun each individual enemy. 3 turns of 20% defense debuff with a 91% chance to stun can be a lot better than one other skill I use quite often. Her third skill ties up her kit quite nicely. 50% battery, debuff success buff, and buster resist debuff on one enemy. 30% success is just enough to bypass any level of magic resistance. She relies a lot on debuffs, so anti-RNG is very welcome. It's even better than usual because most debuffers rely on debuffs to bypass resistances. It's kind of redundant if the debuff resistance reduction is resisted by the debuff resistance. The buster resist is substantial, although it would have been much more convenient for her in general if it affected all enemies. It probably wouldn't have been too powerful either. Look at her competition. Because of the battery's cooldown, she can 3 turn with Vich, but she's not particularly good at it. Her damage boosts are single target debuffs, so her damage against the ones that she does not debuff is not good. Also, since they're debuffs, if you're trying to get damage on multiple waves, it won't carry over like with buffs. But her own damage isn't her focus. Let's continue. Her NP removes all enemy defensive buffs before damage and applies a defense debuff after damage. As prior stated, it does not do much damage to multiple enemies. I found that it is very good in challenge quests that allow use of a damage boosting CE. Her utility is so good that if you can make up for the poor damage at base, she's really strong as a DPS. That's not all that common. What is common is using that NP as an enabler. Let's say your main damage dealer is some buster AoE with no way of dealing with invuln or defense buffs. What are your options? 
Well, you can switch up your craft essence with something that has invuln pierce. That solves that, but what about the opportunity cost? You drop the option of bringing starting charge that has damage bonuses on top. You can't use Black Grail, and although Honey Lake offers a huge damage boost with that pierce invuln, its use weakens a bit in AoE fights because it can be awkward to enable. So you might be missing damage checks because you're investing in ways to work around the hard survival. And lastly, you might be using an event damage C that doesn't have pierce invuln. Alright, so let's say the craft essence is inflexible. You can't use something else. Now we look for support options. Who do we have? Currently we just have Sherlock and Jane for Pierce support. Jane is quite gimmicky and needs a certain amount of stars to work with. Sherlock is much more manageable, but he generally focuses on art support. His NP is also arts, meaning you're likely going to lose that buster starting bonus if you're going for damage. We can also work with other buff removers. When you consider those, we have Osaka Bahime, Alexander, Phantom. Not really one of my first considerations for buster support though. There aren't really any buff removal options among the creme de la creme supports. It is worth noting that Martha and Santa Nightingale are pretty nice options. Nightingale can only remove one buff per enemy, but the rest of her support is pretty solid. Martha has a more pointed focus with a full debuff clear and heal in addition to her buff purge and defense debuffs. Some people dislike Rider supporters though due to absorb problems. So why Abby then? She offers basically no sustain beyond a stun. Sure she has some utility and damage support, but it isn't that much, is it? Well, it is a lot. When it comes to damage support, she has the second highest impact on Buster NP damage out of all servants, second only to Oberon himself. 70 to 90% defense for one attack, 30% buster resist down for three turns, and a buster NP to enable that juicy 50% damage bonus on the rest of the chain. It can even boost the overcharge of the main attacker. The problem with that is you have to be mindful of her sleep debuff. You may want to save it for a separate turn. It's not completely a negative, you can look at it as two separate turns you can have defensive buff removal. It's time to address an issue people take with her. I would rather bring a different support. This is a fair criticism. A lot of the time you're better off bringing a stronger dedicated support, something with a focus on longevity or a stronger damage focus. Her damage boost is pretty bursty and someone like Koyansky can make damage happen better. But we have to look at what a support really is and why we pick which one. The reason why Merlin is such an easy pick for challenge quests is because of his sheer versatility. He could do basically anything for most any team. Naturally, when you bring so much universal value, you overflow a bit. Maybe you crit for 50,000 more damage than what you need. Maybe the invuln is wasted because the enemy has low damage output. Maybe you sit several turns at over 100% gauge. Maybe you sit at full health, regenerating nothing. Maybe you do nothing at all because the enemy has a bunch of defensive buffs that you can't do anything about. Am I advocating for a Merlin buff? Hell no. I'm just trying to highlight something she has over other supports, and why we bring supports, period. A support isn't so simple as just a servant that buffs a teammate. A support is someone who makes up for the weaknesses of the attacker. Oftentimes, the weakness is survival. The other most common one is damage. However, as time has gone on, one of the more impactful ones has been utility. As Pryor highlighted, our options for buff removal are quite limited. The few that can buff remove have a tendency of being less flexible. They don't even buff remove as well as she does. Just because she doesn't support defensively as well doesn't mean your team will instantly die. In fact, there are times where she can help you defensively in ways other supports can't. A good example is a certain boss in Lost Belt 6. They spam a lot of offensive buffs and have a tendency of critting people for ludicrous amounts of damage. Command codes can kinda help, but command codes don't remove Envolm Pierce. That's right, the boss gets Envolm Pierce for a while on a certain bar break. She is able to remove it. She can also remove turns of actions the enemy can take with her terror skill. I briefly mentioned it earlier, but after messing around with some team comps, I just can't stress how huge Fango can be for her. 150% crit and at least 30% attack. 
is so massive. Does Buster cards easily break 100,000 each? It isn't a one-way street either. She isn't completely leaning on Van Gogh. The extra round of terror debuffs can be nice. One of Go's few weaknesses appears whenever the enemy starts using hard survival. Dishing out crits for several hundred thousand damage is all well and good until you can't do any damage at all. When you use Go with Abby, you're going to be focusing on card damage, so you can keep her NP in your pocket until the enemy uses that kind of skill. If that isn't a problem, you can just use it to stack more defense debuffs. The most plentiful damage modifier is crit, so defense debuffs can have some impact. 40% for 3 turns is no slouch. She also has a card resist debuff, which Go kinda has, but more card buff types means more coverage. There are a few things I'd like to see buffed on her. Skill-wise, I'd like to see her first or third skill become AoE. I'm talking both the Buster Resist debuff and the debuff success buff. Debuff success supporters are sorely lacking in this game. It's basically just Kaz skill. Everything else is debuff based, and I'm kinda tired of having to bring Phantom to guarantee my debuffs. Personally, I think she will see better performance receiving an NP buff. What I want for her is the same effect as I want on her Winter version. Cooldown reduction on NP. Ozymandias got it, and he was already way better. Cooldown reduction basically buffs her skills in addition to her NP. One common complaint I have seen with her is her cooldowns. They're not as bad as her OG version, but they could still definitely be better. If they want to go nuts, they could give her some sort of boost against mentally debuffed enemies. Although that would be kind of ironic because Summer Kiara came out immediately before her, and she has the same gimmick. It might be a bit too strong though, but hey, Look at her competition. I, I don't think it would be too much of a stretch. So what do we have with Summer Abigail Williams? AoE Foreigner hybrid DPS slash support with good gains yet low damage. Two ways to sun, two ways to buff remove, three ways to reduce defense. Ku Alter's worst nightmare. Is she a must summon? No. She won't be an account changer like most of the premium supports. But if you get Abby while rolling for Summer Murasaki, hesitate to burn her. If you're creative, you can find some really good uses for her. I rate her at least two tiers above Voyager.